Hello, everybody. Oh, please, please. Too kind, too kind. Sit down, sit down. Today, we are going to go over how you ship your product from China to the Amazon warehouse. In this video, we're going to look at the four primary shipping methods as well as shipping via air versus shipping via sea. Hopefully, after this video, we'll be able to find the best method for you. So, let's go. The first method is EXW, and this is where you're fully responsible for the entire transportation process. This means that the supplier is only responsible for actually supplying the product. In this case, like I said, the supplier really isn't responsible for anything. You have to set it up so that somebody goes to your manufacturer, picks it up, sends it to the Chinese port, whether it's an airport or a seaport, ensure that it gets across the ocean or to wherever your domestic port is. You have to clear it through customs and pay all the taxes. And then finally, from your domestic port, you have to ship it to the Amazon FBA warehouse. So it's a pretty lengthy process and there's a lot of places that this could go wrong. The main idea with this one is that you are 100% responsible for every bit of this transportation process. It's really complicated and I would by no means recommend it to any first time sellers or existing sellers. Because if you make one wrong move and screw this up, your business could be put at risk and it could cost you a lot of money. It could even put you out of business. I'd give this method a negative one out of five and I would recommend that you not use it unless there's a very specific reason that you would need to be using it. The second option is FOB, also known as freight on board. This is where the supplier is responsible for getting the product from their warehouse to the Chinese port and to your domestic port. As soon as it arrives at your domestic port, your supplier's job is done, all the liability is now on you. Once it's in the domestic port, then you're responsible for all the taxes and duty that comes with it, and then you would be responsible for shipping the product uh, to the Amazon warehouse. Alternatively, you could hire a freight forwarder to take it from there when it reaches that domestic port. I'll give this method a two out of five stars. It is easier than the last method I just talked about, but at the same time, it is very complicated and still a lot of things can go wrong even if your product has made it stateside. And yeah, I wouldn't recommend it for first time Amazon sellers either. Finally, the last two options, DDU and DDP. And in my biased opinion, you're gonna wanna go with DDP. DDP stands for Delivery Duty Paid. This is where the supplier is responsible for the product and shipping it from the manufacturer warehouse all the way to the Amazon warehouse. Usually all the fees associated with this process, including transportation, tax, duty, that's all combined into one conveniently for you. This method is fantastic. It allows you to kind of get away from the shipping process, know that somebody else is handling that, and you can focus on other areas of your business. So for those reasons, as you may have guessed, I'm gonna give this one the five out of five stars, just because it really makes the process a whole lot simpler than all the others, and it's a great option for most sellers, but especially new Amazon sellers. And then finally, there's DDU, which is kind of like the less fun brother or sister of DDP. DDU stands for Delivery Duty Unpaid. It's essentially the same thing as DDP, but as the name suggests, taxes and other things are unpaid, so you'd be paying those fees along the way rather than kind of negotiating them earlier before you start this whole process. I'd give this method a three out of five. It takes a lot of the guesswork out of the process, but let's be real, just go with DDP. It's just everything up front, and why would you do DDU? Finally, let's look at if you should ship your product by air or by sea. If you're shipping by air, as you may have guessed, it's gonna be faster, but it's also gonna be more expensive. 
If we're using the US, for example, usually it takes around five to seven business days to land on the West Coast. If you're shipping by sea, it's gonna be less expensive, but it's gonna take more time to get to your domestic port. As long as you plan your orders accordingly, it's probably best to go by sea, unless you're rushing to restock for whatever reason, then you might have to use air. When shipping to the US, what I've found is that it generally takes 15 to 20 days to ship to the west coast by sea, and to ship to the east coast by sea, it can take up to 30 to 40 days. Hopefully this video helped to inform you and helped you to make a decision on which suits your needs best. Although I am biased in the methods, there wouldn't be four methods if people didn't use each and every one of them. So maybe one will work for you, even though I gave it a negative star or something like that. We put out new videos just about every week about various topics surrounding Amazon for independent Amazon sellers that you might find helpful. So please like, comment, and subscribe so that you can stay up to date on all the content we're putting out and hopefully you'll find something else of value in the future. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.